Good morning, everyone. So I'm gonna try to answer the question before we do the testing that a lot of people are asking about this truck. And that is, is this 2023 GMC Denali 1500 Sierra pickup truck, four wheel drive with a three liter diesel engine, the new three liter diesel engine, is it a tow worthy truck? Is this a truck that you can use for towing around relatively heavy trailers? Can you tow around a RV with it? Can you tow around a fifth wheel with it? And we're gonna try to talk about some of that today. And then I'll talk to you about what my plans are in terms of using this to tow some of the various trailers we have around here and maybe some trailers off site as well. Hang tight, I'll be right back. Okay, so let's first talk about the power plant under the hood. So I think most people, at least most people who have been following the three liter Duramax realize that the engine in this specific truck is considered the second generation of the three liter inline six Duramax diesel. The specific one in this truck is called the LZ0 engine and it is, uh, it's supposed to be enhanced. It's supposed to have, I think, greater oil capacity and several other things as well. But you know, as far as all the intricacies and differences between this engine and the previous outgoing three liter diesel engine, I honestly couldn't tell you. I know that uh, a lot of folks have really been waiting to see what this engine's capable of because the first engine was actually a really good engine. Not a lot of people had a heck of a lot of problems with it. And uh, people really enjoy that engine from a power output perspective, even from a towing perspective, but most importantly, from a fuel economy aspect, that it gets really, really good fuel economy. I know the EPA numbers on it are in the mid 20s, uh, but I know a lot of people have said they've gotten into the mid 30s whenever they're, uh, they're really light footed on the pedal. So that is pretty cool. Now, the new engine, the engine that this truck is equipped with, again, is called the LZ0. And this specific engine produces 305 horsepower and 495 pound-feet of torque. And it's also paired to a 10-speed automatic transmission. Now, the 495 pound-feet of torque is at 2,550 RPMs. And you get the 305 horsepower at 3,750 RPMs. When you compare this to the outgoing 3-liter, they call this the enhanced 3-liter. And, you know, the real big enhancements are the fact that they were able to really squeeze more power out of it and slightly better fuel economy according to the folks over at General Motors. So it used to have 277 horsepower and 460 pound-feet of torque. So yeah, so now it's 305 and 495. So pretty significant increases in terms of both power and torque from this relatively small three liter inline six. All right, towing. Let's talk about towing. Let's talk about payload because every time I do videos on RVs or towing, these are the two numbers I always tell you to pay very, very close attention to but the cool thing about the folks at GM is they don't make you guess they put a sticker on the side and let's go ahead and decipher that sticker because I think it's really important for you all to really understand why those numbers are there and what they apply to okay so here's the trailering sticker on the side of my truck you can see it has a gross vehicle weight rating of 7,200 pounds. They do have a variation of this where you can get like an extra payload package and it's like 7,300 pounds. So it gives you about 100 pounds worth of additional payload capacity. The gross combined weight rating of this truck is 15,000 pounds. Rear axle rating, 3,800 pounds. Curb weight, which is the dry weight of this truck. I love that they include that. It's 5,758 pounds. And the maximum payload capacity right there, 1,442 pounds. Now that should coincide with your other sticker on the side of the truck, which mine does, and it's 1,442 pounds as well. So that is the maximum amount of weight that this truck is designed to carry from a fully loaded perspective. People, cargo, supplies, everything in the bed of the truck, everything that you would take with you should not exceed 1,442 pounds. Now, when we talk about the SAE J2807 trailering ratings, that's really where you have to start trying to figure out why there's some differences here. So conventional trailer, maximum trailering on this truck is 8,800 pounds. I know some folks automatically think it's got a diesel, right? This thing should be able to tow 12,000 pounds. No, this diesel, yes, it's powerful, but it's primarily designed for fuel economy and adequate towing numbers. So when I talk about towing a 6,000 pound travel trailer, it's not the fact that I'm saying trucks are weak or wimpy, it's that you have to understand specifically what truck you have and what your specific truck is rated for based on its trim package, based on the features, but more importantly, based on what the manufacturer actually said the truck could tow. So 8,800 pounds. Maximum tongue weight, the amount of weight that the, the actual A-frame is gonna rest on the back of your truck is actually 10% of that, 880 pounds. It has a gooseneck trailer rating of 6,500 pounds. 
though I don't know of many gooseneck trailers that would meet that when loaded. There are several that are about that weight when they're empty, but again, yeah, you're going to be hard-pressed to find something that's going to meet that weight rating fully, fully loaded. I know there's a few really, really small fifth wheels out there that are fiberglass and super, super tiny, but they're hard to find and they're extremely expensive. Maximum tongue weight from a gooseneck perspective, 975 pounds. So you can carry more weight if it's going to be over the back axle than if it's going to be hanging off the back of the truck. Now, a lot of people are going to say, why is there a discrepancy between the maximum tongue weight of 880 pounds versus the maximum payload capacity of 1,442 pounds? You know, why is there such a big delta between that? If the truck is rated to carry 1,442 pounds, then shouldn't the maximum tongue weight or the maximum tongue weight for gooseneck and conventional be 1,442 pounds? And that is not true. The, the good folks over at GM were smart enough to know that you're not going to be towing without any people in the truck. You're probably going to have supplies. You're going to have a hitch. You're going to have other things that are, going to, that are going to take away from the payload capacity before you even hitch your trailer up to this truck. So when you look at 880 pounds and we think about RVs, we think about trailers and how much weight they actually transfer over, you'll realize that it's very, very, very easy to hit 880 pounds, even with the 6,000 pound trailer, very, very quickly. So let's talk about that a little bit more in relation to this truck. Okay, so right next to the truck, I have two of my Texas Pride trailers. I have my brand new, or relatively new, less than a year old, Texas Pride Low Boy. This is only a 14 foot long trailer, but it is overbuilt. And when I say overbuilt, it's built the way people who want RVs to weigh three times as much as they currently do, but to have crazy frames, crazy axles, crazy everything on them. That's how this thing's built. This trailer probably weighs two to three times as much as your traditional, you know, Lowe's bought 14 foot utility trailer. And you can probably see why just by looking at the steel structure that supports this thing. I mean, everything about this thing is huge and robust. And the reason why I say that is because this trailer as it sits weighs about 3,500 pounds, which again is about two and a half times more than most trailers that are similar to this in terms of size. So yeah, about 3,500 pounds. Before you have even loaded this trailer up, it transfers roughly five to 600 pounds to the back of a vehicle. Not even kidding you. This thing is really, really designed to be hauled by my 450. And uh, yeah, we're gonna tow it with this truck as well. Okay, right next to it is the, uh, well, I don't wanna say more heavy duty, but it's a little heavier duty, but it's also an overbuilt trailer. This is a 14 foot dump trailer, Texas Pride. This thing is about 5,500 pounds dry, empty, mainly because of the steel structure. It's a huge, huge steel structure. Um, very, very heavy, most dump trailers are. Uh, you can see that the frame design is very similar to that of the low boy over here. This trailer dry with nothing in it transfers about 700 pounds to the back of a pickup truck when you hitch it up. You can see that heavy duty style coupler that it has here same type or similar type to what we have on the other trailer over there so about 700 pounds would be added to the back of your truck before you've added anything to the back of these trailers now the axles on both trailers are also positioned slightly further back than you might see on an rv where they really kind of put the the axles towards the center which means your weight and balance profile is going to be thrown off a little bit as well because once you start loading these things up with weight and that weight starts creeping forward of the axle a lot of that weight's going to transfer over to the back of your tow vehicle so as it sits right now it may not look as if it's like super 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 loaded down it may not look that way because the brush and everything you see in here was probably five to six feet above the top until it all died until we had a freeze come through and everything kind of settled down and uh, that's re very deceiving for dump trailers. A lot of people believe a dump trailer is loaded up whenever you start seeing stuff appear from the top. And that's usually not the case, at least with dirt. You throw dirt in here, if you can see the dirt cresting over the top of these uh, three foot tall sidewalls, you're probably approaching about 20,000 pounds or more worth of dirt. Not even kidding you. If you really want to track how much something like this weighs you got to take it to a scale but then you've already towed it there and you may have already done something not only dangerous but possibly illegal that said in the back of this dump trailer is a giant giant root ball from a tree that we pulled out of the ground and so you can see i've compressed it down pretty pretty extensively with the mini excavator and the reason why i'm telling you this is we put the root ball 
right about here. So it's right in the center of the trailer. And I always have to remember that it's there whenever I'm compressing stuff because, yeah, the minute you hit the root ball with the excavator, the excavator just lifts up and the trailer doesn't compress any further. Uh, that said, though, a lot of the weight is loaded right in this area. And I would guess, and I don't know yet, in another video we're going to tow with this truck, and I'm going to show you specifically how much tongue weight there is, but I'm going to guess we probably are at about eight to 900, maybe even upwards of 1,000 pounds worth of tongue weight that would rest on the back of a pickup truck. Can't be 100% sure. As this wood dries out, it's going to lose some of that moisture and some of that weight, but it's still pretty well loaded. The trailer right now, as loaded up, I'm going to say it's probably right around 9,000 pounds. Um, and again, probably eight to 900 pounds worth of tongue weight on the back. However, this is a pretty good example of what people would probably try to tow with their half ton truck. They might rent a dump trailer and this is a relatively small dump trailer. So we may tow this thing around just briefly to show you what that's about. But the other thing you also have to keep in mind with something like this is there's no way to add weight distribution to this. They don't make a weight distribution system that's gonna be able to go around those frame rails. So using weight distribution with a trailer like this, which again is a very common trailer somebody might rent to tow with a truck like this, if you can't distribute that weight at all, then it's all going to be resting towards the back of your vehicle and you're going to be possibly taking weight off the front axle of your vehicle. Actually, you're absolutely going to be taking weight off the front axle of your vehicle and it can make for a pretty sketchy towing situation. But I think the numbers on this trailer, that will be so close to that maximum number without going crazy, crazy over that this would be a really good towing example to use with the truck. Now, what's gonna be very different about this versus a travel trailer or an RV is its wind profile. The fact is that this is less than half the height of a typical conventional travel trailer. It's significantly shorter than a typical travel trailer. And even though the weight is here, um, it actually benefits it slightly to have the axles of the trailer pushed back slightly because most of the weight will rest either above or forward of the axles and it's gonna give me a little bit more stability whenever towing. So there are some factors that play with a trailer like this that are different than if you're towing an RV. So let's talk about a trailer that would be very similar to towing an RV and what we could possibly do there as well. Okay, so this is one of our other trailers. This is the BT BRV cargo trailer. As this trailer sits right now, it does have stuff in it and it's loaded up pretty well in terms of what's in it, just not in terms of overall weight. But this trailer is a good example of another type of trailer that people would probably commonly tow with a truck like this. This trailer is 20 feet long. Let's take a look at the numbers on the trailer. This trailer has a GVWR of 9,800 pounds, has a cargo capacity of 6,520 pounds. So this trailer, again, is a good example of what somebody might tow with a truck like this. And you might feel really confident about it because really from a specs perspective, it's very close to the ratings of this truck. And it does exceed it if you loaded this thing completely full, but there's some things to think about here. So the axles on this trailer are positioned more towards the back, but definitely further up than the other two trailers. And something to keep in mind about that is, depending on how you load this trailer up, you could easily add a significant amount of weight to the, the receiver of your vehicle, or you could reduce a significant amount of weight from the receiver. So you gotta be really, really careful when it comes to balancing out a load that you put inside of a trailer like this. If it's gonna be a car, if it's gonna be motorcycles, things like that, you definitely wanna make sure you're careful of where the engine is where most of the weight would be resting once you load it into something like this. And you'd really want most of the weight to be right in this area right here, right about the where the door handle is, right in this area. Because you do wanna transfer weight to the truck, but you don't wanna have, let's say a vehicle backed in to where the engine's way back here, and now it's trying to lift up on the back and you're creating instability and you're really balancing too much weight towards the back. But on that same note, you're not gonna to wanna to pull, let's say a car all the way to the front and then put a bunch of stuff in the back because now you're gonna be transferring the most weight to this area right here. And as you do that, you're gonna be transferring a significant amount of tongue weight to the truck. These variables aren't nearly as important when, it, when you're towing something like this with a, a very heavy truck, a heavy three quarter ton truck, a dually like my truck, because the truck itself weighs so much 
and because of the suspension on the truck is so much firmer and designed to carry more weight that you really could put a lot of weight in this area and it would actually be better for the truck and the trailer because the truck's not really going to flinch much at the weight while at the same time you're going to be in a situation where the trailer has more of the stability towards the front and not the back so yeah, you have to be very careful with a load like this. This truck loaded up, if I probably put 4,000 pounds worth of weight in the back of this truck, maybe loaded up the golf cart plus a few other things inside of the back of this, this would be a really good trailer to haul around with this truck because it's a good representation of the size of an RV that you might tow. Now, the wind profile, it is a big box. It still is relatively tall, but it's not quite as tall as your typical RV. An RV would be about a foot taller than this in an equivalent size. So I wouldn't be able to give you the exact same comparison, but it would be very similar. But yeah, this is just a good kind of an example of what I feel this truck is capable of in terms of towing trailers, what type of trailers and how you want to load those trailers up. And we're going to do all sorts of towing evaluations with this trailer, the other trailers. Uh, since we purchased the truck, there's no huge rush to do it. But at the same time now, I have that ability to use this truck for whatever I need to use it for without having any worries of possibly damaging it. So yeah, that's going to be really cool. Just wanted to make this video to show you what I think from a towing perspective this truck is capable of. Fifth wheel towing? No, it's out of the question. I would never tow a fifth wheel behind this. My gooseneck over here, right? This gooseneck, just the pin weight as it sits on this is about 1,300 pounds. It's that heavy. Um, it's so heavy that I can't even lift the front off the ground with my tractor. I can't even lift it, it won't even budge. It'll lift the back of the tractor off the ground before it tries. So you throw this in the bed of the truck, not only have I exceeded the stickers on the door by a huge margin, anytime I start adding weight, because again, the axles are relatively far to the back, I'd have to be super careful where I position that weight because any weight moving forward would overload it. But this might still be a good example of something I could at least load the pin weight of into the bed of the truck to show you how it handles this type of weight, just so you can understand what some of the limitations are. And who knows, I may end up going to an RV dealership working with some of my, uh, my partners to see if I should just try to tow an RV behind this. And we may actually get a loaner RV just so I can, you know, do some towing with this and show you what it's capable of. Because I think that's what people are also really concerned about. They want to know what's the largest RV I could tow with something like this. And you know, uh, there's several companies I could call to see if maybe I can get a, an RV for a few months to see how this tows one of those. Anyways, guys, I sure hope you've enjoyed this video. If you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you again very soon.